Come be inspired. Soyez inspiré. Be ignited. Enciéndete. Be included. O shamil ho. Because what starts with a single drop. Then aus einem einzigen Tropfen. End of the way. Peru Elam. So happy, happy almost International Women's Day. Are we excited? Okay. Um, so I am Kia Wilson. I'm the global lead for the Women's Alliance of Verizon Employees, also known as WAVE. <gasps> Uh, we are so excited to have everybody in this room, so excited to have the support on this day. We're inspired and we're ignited around the passions to drive forward gender equity and just being able to show up as your authentic self. So I just want to reflect on some things that we were really proud of in WAVE um, from last year coming into this new year, powerful and ready to go. Um, one of those things is the partnership with WOW Connect. So many of you may have already received the email to get engaged and get involved. That was a years long worth of partnership and collaboration with the L&D team. So we're really excited about that. The other thing that we're really excited about is our community involvement. So last year we had a goal of attaining 4,000 community service hours and we killed it rocking over 5,500 hours for 2023. <laughs> And that was from over 4,500 V-teamers, unique V-teamers being involved in driving their passions and the things that they are um, committed to driving in their community. So I think that that's great to be able to be celebrated at that for work. I mean, celebrated at work for that. Um, so I am really excited about this monumental moment. Are you guys ready to be a part of history? Okay, okay. I thought so because this is the first time we are getting the women of the VLC. We are going to hear from them. Candid discussions, really great conversations. So without further ado, I'm going to bring up Aparna, who's going to be moderating us today. And thank you so much for being here. OK, and can I invite the women of VLC onto stage? I know they need no introduction. So hello, Leslie, hello. Sam. Hello, Stacey. Hello. Your first, your first assignment yes. here. In yes. Well, not my first. We're first so week. excited. Yeah. Yeah. The first week, the first day, right? Yeah. The, the most, most important. important assignment. Yeah. Hello, Wandana. Hello. How's everyone doing? So, hello, beautiful women and our allies. Craig sitting Woo. right up front here. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> hello here in Basking Ridge, man. right? And hello in all our watch parties across. All of Verizon, so excited. Just give a shout out to yourself. We're excited to be here today. I know it's been palpable. There's, it's been, we've been leading up to this day, and it's a pretty iconic day. I have the best seat here <laughs> in the room. Uh, and it's iconic because I was telling Sam this, it's the first time we have four trailblazers from the VLC mm -hmm. sitting with us. These are four leaders of the biggest and the best, and I'm not talking impartially, the best telco in the world. I was just at MWC and I got a chance to talk to a whole bunch of others and I will tell you, these are the best. <laughs> and they're also great humans. And they happen to be badass women. <laughs> So just like all of you, I'm pretty excited, but I won't lie, I'm excited about one more thing. Throughout my journey in Verizon, I wanted to be on the other side of 60 seconds. Oh. <laughs> it's so cool. And by the way, I get to do 120 seconds. I asked for more because there are the four of them. So are you all ready? We're ready. OK, We're so ready. the way this is going to go is quick questions, a different one to each one of you. No pressure. OK, and we'll see how many, whether my card gets over or the time. Should we start the clock? OK, right. the clock starts. Right. OK, Vandana, we'll start with you. Uh, a song that makes you happy. Beyonce's. Everything <laughs> by Beyonce. <laughs> Queen Bay in the house. Beyonce. Okay. Yes. Uh, favorite binge watching. Me? Yes. Oh gosh. Um, Handmaid's Tale. Yes. Oh, very nice. Very nice. One cause you feel passionate about. Uh, anything for kids. 
Very nice. A superpower you would want to have? That I want to have uh, fearlessness. A superpower you have? Authenticity. Very nice. Right. First thing you do in the AM when you get up? Meditate. Very nice. Oh. Wow. <laughs> I was like TikTok. Very nice. That's okay. impressive. Yeah, TikTok. TikTok, yeah. 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 <laughs> I'm inspired. Uh, I'm but inspired. I watch The Handmaid's Tale at night, so I have to meditate. <laughs> okay. okay, thank you. Favorite place to vacation? So, Maui. Mm -hmm. uh, a brand you admire? Actually, it's perfect that I asked oh, you that. Yeah. Outside okay. of Verizon. Oh, um, and can be Peloton. You just came from there. That, no comment. <laughs> um, a brand I, I, I admire. Um, uh, I don't want to say the obvious, but Nike. Nike's a brand Love I admire. Nike. Very nice. That's it. A guilty pleasure you have? Video games. Oh. 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 Did you know that about her? I, I love No, but I love that about her. <laughs> a skill you haven't mastered as yet that you would want to? Mm. Boxing. Oh. Yes. Cool. One thing you cannot live without? Sunshine. Huh? Mm. Beautiful. Favorite band? Oh, um, uh, you too. Okay. Oh, thank you. Yes. Yes. <laughs> very nice. Very nice. I see you. I see you. London, a favorite cuisine? Oh, um, Indian. Hmm? Very nice. Had to say that. Stacey, best life lesson you've had. <laughs> best life lesson you've had. Mm, actually, from boxing. From boxing. Um, before a fight begins, the, the uh, rules are protect yourself at all times. Oh. Self-care. Very nice. And then we'll end with you. One thing you cannot live without, you said sunshine. One thing you do ample of. Ample of is probably too much talking. But I need to do more little or listening. Exercise also, I, do I think, a lot of right? exercise, yes. That's pretty awesome. Very good. Thank you so much. Thank you for that. I think they did pretty well. I was almost running out of questions, so that was quick. That was really good. Okay, so what we're going to do now is uh, I'm going to switch into, and Wave did an amazing job with a whole bunch of questions. First time with, with me and Card, so we'll figure out how that works. Uh, but we've got a bunch of questions for all of you. I'm going to start off with some, what we will call pithism or universal truths that women are always talked about in the, in the light of those. Um, the first one I'll go with is, Usually women need to be checking 100% of the boxes before they raise their hand. How many of you hmm. agree with me? Yes. You see the men aren't raising their hands? <laughs> because the, the number for them, universally accepted, is 60%. Uh, so um, maybe we will go with you, Stacy. Sure. Um, firstly, welcome. Thank welcome, you. Welcome, welcome. We're very excited to have you. I'm excited to be here. We'd love to hear a little bit about you, but also hear about how you've pushed yourself and really kind of taken that leap when you didn't think you were ready. And any advice you have for the, the women here in the room? Yeah, so um, probably the most poignant moment in my career is when our general counsel and CEO asked me to move to DC to be a federal lobbyist for the company. And in my old industry, um, most, if not all, of the lobbyists were lawyers. Um, came from Capitol Hill, or um, they were state lobbyists and then moved to federal. So I went, what are you thinking? I, none of those things um, do I have. So I went into the general counsel's office, who happened to be female, and I said, I'm flattered that you would um, ask me to take on this opportunity, but I don't have any of these skills. And she closed her door and she said, do you know how many people want this job? And um, I have to be careful what I say. This is my first week and I want to stay. <laughs> <laughs> but she was very... I know someone in HR. <laughs> <laughs> she was very explicit that if there was something in the job description that men like physically can't do, they would say, oh, I would figure it out. I won't go into any more detail. She's like, you have the capabilities. Uh, we trust that you have what we need going into the future of that role. Um, don't ever tell people who are offering you an opportunity that you're not prepared for that opportunity, which was a great learning. Very good. And I'm sure you kicked ass in that role. <laughs> it well. There you go. There you go. So, uh, thank you. Thank you for sharing that. And pulling on that thread, self-doubt, another thing that a lot of us uh, have, right? It kind of weighs on us. Um, one of the things that people tell us is you've got to move beyond that. 
most of the dreams that you lose are because of self-doubt, even more than failures uh, that you will see. So, uh, Leslie, welcome. Yes. You're no longer the, the, the newbie the new one, no. in the crowd, Thank but, you, Cece. <laughs> but it's month three. Hopefully you're enjoying Starting yourself. Starting month, month three, yes, I and am. Hopefully this blast. is the best decision you've made it in your is. career. It is. That's right. <laughs> Thank you for that. Um, so what do you think about self-doubt and how do you uh, yeah. kind of get rid of or banish the itty bitty Absolutely. committee in your brain? Yeah, and sometimes they're not very itty bitty. <laughs> um, I, you know, self-doubt and by the way, others doubting you, right? So I think you just mentioned somebody who believed in you and I think we've, hopefully you've all experienced that and I think we've probably all experienced those who doubt us. And typically those things happen at the same time and they're sort of commingled. So I would say at every significant milestone in my career, imposter syndrome is real. Mm -hmm. The, um, I had a similar experience to Stacey actually where my answer was immediately no. Let me talk you out of <laughs> this new opportunity that you're now presenting to me. Um, and so I think it's a journey, you know, and I know it sounds a little bit trite, but confidence really comes within. So as much as you can, in my experience, dial down the noise, be very intentional in who you surround yourself with, and who, by the way, this is professionally, this is also personally. Yeah. You know, people you trust, people you respect, people that do hype you up, people that do build you up, right? Because I think we've seen very talented people tear themselves down, and people who maybe be a different type of person build themselves up. So it's really what we create within ourselves, and so I think, the inner voice in your head, you're gonna have moments as I have where you doubt yourself, you question yourself, you beat yourself up. But and that's I, okay sometimes. That's okay, right? and by the way, it's kind of, it kind of energizes us, right? Like it kind of makes us work harder, do better, um, you know, run through walls. So I think, I think that energy, if channeled for good, is awesome. And just make sure you keep it in balance and keep building up the voice within your own head and make it super positive. Thank you. So doubt does kill more dreams than failures ever will. Mm -hmm. And what we've got to do, and what I'm hearing from you, is really taking that doubt and putting it to use, yes. right? You said something about armchair yes. quarterback. I'd rather be in that kind of phase than the, uh, so you, uh, uh, you talked about imposter, imposter yes. syndrome. Yes. I'd rather be in that space than the armchair quarterback who's sitting there going, I know it all, because that's how you learn and it's grow. Hmm. And that gets me actually to uh, being comfortable with the uncomfortable. Mandana, I've seen you do that. I've seen you push, <laughs> not just yourself, but all of us yeah. uh, into that uncomfortable realm. Right. Uh, talk to us a little bit about it how you do it. starts with my jacket, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I, didn't get, uh, I didn't get the memo. Um, but um, <laughs> but, but, um, but I, I, I really, I wanna start with a story of what uncomfortable means, because it's really about, a little bit what Leslie was talking about, really about um, vulnerability at the core of it, mm -hmm. right? Because being uncomfortable really means that you have to own who you are and you have to show up as who you are and that means being vulnerable. And some of you have um, heard Brene Brown talk about the power of, of vulnerability because it opens us up to that. So I wanna start with the story of uh, something that I did recently. I have three boys, three teenage boys, um, and they, as many of you who have teenage boys, are sort of hunkered down a little bit sometimes. Um, they don't wanna to talk to anybody. Uh, they're, they're doing their thing and usually behind a screen of some type, um, and we had a challenge as a family that we would talk to one stranger a week. So I know, stranger danger, but these are, <laughs> these are teenagers, this is not, they're not two-year-olds. And it could be of somebody at school, it could be somebody somewhere else, and I, you know, was gonna model that myself. So uh, here at, the, at Basking Ridge Cafe, when I was standing in line, I turned around to somebody I didn't know, I introduced myself, and I offered to pay for that person's coffee. Oh. That's very great. Now, $30 <laughs> later, when that guy bought <laughs> Bunch of stuff. Um, boy, did I learn my lesson about that. But, but the point was, even for somebody like me who is out there talking to people, to just like talk to somebody I didn't know was really hard. And my kids struggled with that immensely. Just somebody at school that they hadn't talked to. And the reason was, what if they don't like me? What mm -hmm. if they, what, you know, I, I, I don't come across the right way. What if I'm taking an unpopular position and I have to say something hard in a meeting? Those are things each of us struggles with daily. And my answer to you is to think of uncomfortableness, discomfort, as a bubble around you. And you keep pushing that bubble. 
and you push it a little bit this way and you push it a little bit that way and your discomfort effectively starts to you know, go away because you're expanding that bubble and it helps. So, I, so that's what I would just tell you as you, as you think about how, how you deal with uncomfortableness and difficult decisions, standing up for what you believe when it might not be popular, is just think about that as a bubble that you keep pushing and you keep pushing until you do that. I love that image of the bubble and pushing that, right? And being comfortable with that and then pushing further. So that's awesome. That brings me to the big uh, dreaded F word, failure. Oh. Mm. Right. <laughs> and uh, yeah, no, I'm done. Okay, this I, is, I'm tracking, yeah, I'm tracking. Yeah, PG-13, <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, and this is where um, you threw all the post-it notes. I, I, we all read, how cool are those uh, on LinkedIn? Pretty awesome. You talk a lot about using failure as a gateway to success. So talk to us a little bit about how you've embraced failure and what advice you have for all of us here. Yeah, so, so failure, and how many of us have been in an interview or been on the other side of the interview table and said, tell me about a time when you failed or when you made a mistake. <laughs> yes. um, it's, I actually, it, it's a little bit of a joke because you're guaranteed to get that question, so practice up. <laughs> um, but it, it is really, really important. And I think of, people always say like, what do you hire for? What are you looking for? Um, and I talk a lot about grit but I mostly talk about experiences, and experiences are what make us a diverse collective society and community. And in those experiences, I do listen for times when people had to go through a lot of trial and tribulation. And failure is an important piece of that. First of all, I think if you haven't failed, it tells me you may not be taking enough risk to the spot that, you know, Vonda and I was just talking about with, you know, comfort getting out of that comfort zone. You may not be pushing yourself to get a little bit out of that comfort zone. You may not be pushing and having those stretch goals. Like, really important to get those different experiences and, you know, what have you survived? How do you act in those moments and how do you behave and lead and, and get through those? And it says so much about a person and how they will attack problems, how they will lead their teams, how they will role model mm -hmm. behavior. And so failure is a great thing. F failure is an amazing thing. And so my answer is don't say you haven't failed, right? Don't say my failure is that I work too much, please, for the love, <laughs> do not answer the question like that. Um, but but it it's actually t says a lot about your own grit and your own tenacity and how hard you are willing to push and the boldness that you have. Pretty cool. And um, I often say this to myself, if at the first time I have succeeded, then I need to try harder the next time, yes. right? Yeah. Because you just have to push yourself and experience failure. You do it the first time, you get used to it, you learn and you get that grit. So thank you for that. I think what we heard in this context is you all have doubts, you all have that kind of the imposter syndrome or failures that you're facing, but it's about that grit and about the, the envelope you keep pushing. And I think all of us can take inspiration from that, feel ignited, because we all have those same qualms, but it's about plowing through and moving ahead. What I'm gonna do is another quick round, it's not 60 seconds, so take a little bit of time, uh, but I'll go around, all four of you, and I'd love to know about the best advice you have gotten. Maybe we'll start with you, Leslie. Yes, so I've said this in another setting, so I'll give two, I'll do, give two quick ones. Um, one is get out of your head, which I think we've, we've very much covered. Mm -hmm. And I learned in my career, again, you need to do what scares you. Like, because once you do it, you'll know that you've done it, and then you can do the next thing, the next thing that scares you, and the next thing. Um, but the training as you go of limiting the amount of time you are cycling in your head. I used to time myself, sort of in the middle of my career. I was like, Leslie, you have three hours wow. to obsess. Oh, oh, truly. And by, I'm a mom also, so we be, you know, we beat ourselves up in lots of different ways. <laughs> um, and I would, I would look at the clock. I'm like, am I still thinking about this? Oh, I'm still thinking about this. I no longer can wow. be thinking about. So I actually think it is a muscle, at least I have found, that you can train. Um, and then the other piece of it too, and again, it's about what's in your own head and what's happening around you, is focusing on what you can control. Yeah. I think this has set me free my entire career, is focus on the work, focus mm -hmm. on producing excellent, high impact results, and truly everything will follow. Do it with heart, do it with collaboration, do it with spirit and honesty, but that really will break through at the end of the day, anything else that is surrounding you. That's from true. Focus on excellence and success. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Very good, thank you. Vandana. Can you repeat that question again? 
Yeah, so best I, advice I was, you've gotten. Uh, I, I would say it's um, really sit on your hands, somebody told me, and what, what that really means, I know, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm supplying all the humor, I get it. Uh, um, so uh, the reason that person said, said it to me was because I think often we react quickly to things and we're, you know, we want to react quickly and sometimes that's an emotional reaction, sometimes it's a, you know, a more, you know, sort of a, a thought out reaction, but to just give yourself a little bit of space to sort of think about that a little bit. Think about where you are, think about where the person sitting across from you or the people across from you are, and just assessing that for a second before you say what you say. And that's been really helpful for me because as I've, as I've sort of grown and as I've, I've gone through different uh, roles here at Verizon, that's been really important to sort of check in with myself. As she said, get out of your head. Make sure I know what space I'm in and what that person is in before I say something that I think can go in a lot of different directions. So that, that's been Amazing. the best thing. Amazing, that's, uh, and I, I have gotten that advice from Vandana directly as well. I need it, <laughs> and constant <laughs> reminders of that too, so. Stacy. Um, actually, two things. One is um, don't label yourself, build your capabilities. Lovely. Um, it's so easy for us to say, I'm an HR person, mm -hmm. I'm a marketer, I'm a communicator. No, those are things that you do, um, and that's afforded me the opportunity to be in a lot of different roles because our capabilities are portable and lateral moves are so helpful to you, for you to see like the 360 view of a business or stakeholder. So best advice I ever had early was don't label yourself. All of this about being in our heads because we all are, a lot of that is brain science. Right. So you really need mantras or ways to get yourself out of your head. And for me, it's next play. Um, it's a Coach K saying, I try to own it. My, my husband's like, Coach K says that. That's not um, your saying. But <laughs> it, is oh, now, it is now. It is now. It is now. Um, well said. But you, you see that, whether it's in tennis, my husband's in boxing, which is why there's so much in my life that's around boxing. Um, um, in any sport, if you are stressing about what you did in one moment, you are gonna completely lose the next play. And so as you're going through things, you always wanna process and learn from experiences, but when you're in it, you can't be obsessing about everything someone said or did I say that right, you've gotta go on to the next play. Perfect, thank you, thanks for that. Sam? I, I just really quick building off Stacy's because you said in your in when we were interviewing, uh, she said to me something and I must think about it every other day now. And I was like, damn, that was good. Uh, she said, even the best athlete needs a trainer. Yeah. Mm. And I think about how we invest in ourselves that way, and we can't take our eyes off of that. We constantly need to improve ourselves yeah. and get those trainers for ourselves, no matter where we are in our success ladder. So it fed, feeds off of that coach. And I would say I have two. One I talk about a lot because um, I say, don't let perfection get in the way of good enough. Mm. And that was really yeah. amazing advice so. for me. I think it's important at Verizon because in our DNA, we are the most amazing, we have operational excellence is in our core. And sometimes we can strive for perfection at that and it can be a diminishing return. So that's one really good piece of advice. And then the second I got, and I think about this one all the time is you are your biggest blocker. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And specifically for, for women, we can do this. We can talk ourselves out of things. We can not want to push. It's about push. that self-doubt. And, and our people are more of our champion than we think there are. And how do we not put that block on ourselves? Perfect, thank you so much, thanks for that. So the theme of this discussion really is lift as we rise. So I wanna now switch to more about sponsorship, allyship, and one and I'll, I'm gonna start with you uh, to talk about empowerment. Yeah. So one of the things that Vandana has done for me, I think it was a couple of months ago, reached out. She saw I, I may have needed a little bit of boost. Uh, she, came, she said, let's go do dinner. You remember that? Yeah. We sat down and we had a heart to heart. It was really good. I felt like she was adjusting my crown without telling anybody that it was crooked. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's about empowerment and lifting each other up. So Vandana, tell me about, tell us about how you think about empowerment and yeah, I, I, where I that think takes that's, us. Thank you. Thank you for that. I actually enjoyed our dinner because I actually 
actually came away learning more than I think, um, um, you know, giving, it's, and it's always that two, two sort of sided thing that we do to each other. And I, so I, I guess I would start by saying it, it's really important to figure out um, who your mentors are, who your sponsors are in an organization. And those things are very different. And I think you'll hear different versions of that throughout the, the, the panel here. But it is the common theme, I would say, across all of that is who is actually going to tell you that you have effectively spinach on your teeth, as I call it. Like, <laughs> who is going to give it to you, really, that these are the things that you need to be doing to, uh, to do that, to, to, to not just improve as a person, but, but how do you show up every day? But you have to be in a place that you can receive that as yeah. well. And I think that's really important for us as women because all of that stuff that you just heard around self-doubt, around criticality, about impossible levels of uh, standards that we set for ourselves, important to sort of dial some of that back and hear what the other person is actually saying to you and to be able to take that and do something with that. And that's what I think a mentor gives us and that's what best friends give us. And I hope that you know, as we talk through this and, and, and do this, one of the obligations of leadership, anybody in leadership, not just the women, the women here, but in, in any role, is for you to turn and do that for somebody else. Do that in sure. a way that's empathetic, that's caring, it comes from a good place, um, not, not simply one that where you're saying, well, that's something you gotta do and then you know, leave them with, with, that, with that heaviness, but to give them a hope, to give them a sense of sort of you know, um, intentionality of what you're doing and why you're doing it. It's the best thing that we can do as, we, as women is, is look out for each other and help each other through those things. Yeah. Uh, strong women empower each other, so thank you for that. And for that you need a network, and a network is your net worth. So Sam, um, any tricks uh, or tips on how you create that network and what it is that Verizon can offer? Uh, I mean, I get this question all the time, right? A lot of people saying, how do I get more exposure? How do I build that network? Um, and there's so many facets of network. And, and Vandana talked on a couple of them, like mentors are part of your network. Sponsors are part of your network. I love that you said they're different. Thank you. Because um, they, they really are. And identifying who those people are also just the network of, of people. So I always talk about there is right and wrong ways to try to build the network, but it is so critical for you to have one. And so first of all, a lot of people, women especially, are like, I'm not gonna just reach out to somebody. I promise you, they, they want to. Like, they're not gonna, if they say no, then they say no, I don't have enough time. They're gonna say no nicely, but almost everybody is going to say yes. And so first of all, do that. But my biggest advice is do it with purpose. Yes. Do, do it with intent. And what you do matters. It, it, I promise you it matters to somebody because you are doing something that makes an impact to our customers at Verizon, to the work and to the things that we do. People care about it. So reach out and if you want to network and learn about something someone else is doing or if you just want to make sure that you are on that person's radar, use it with intent and go in with something that you do. You are doing great things. They want to hear about it. There's usually a win-win there. And say, hey, I wanna offer some insight on something your team is doing, or let me educate you on what I'm doing, and I think it could really make an impact in your area. It's the best way to create a relationship, but there's nothing wrong with saying, hey, can we just grab a coffee and do a coffee chat? It will be much deeper and more impactful if there's intent behind it. Very good, thank you for that. Stacy, as we think about the network uh, and we start talking about how it is that there are people who will talk to you, lift you up, uh, your sponsors, and people who will talk about you, uh, <laughs> your sponsors and your mentors, right? Like, so how do you think about the talk, talk to you and talk about you? How do you create that network of sponsors, yeah. network of your mentors? Um, any thing that has worked for you and what would you suggest yeah, to I, this team? I would say, um, some people call it like your personal board of advisors. Mm -hmm. I just call it a support system <laughs> because like you said, you have mentors, you have sponsors, you have coaches, you have like work therapists, <laughs> like people that truly are lifting you up when you are, are, are challenged. I would also think about it as broadly as possible. Yeah. So think about the things that you believe you're really good at and want to grow, and the things that you may have gaps on. So for one, my father is always telling me, like, stop saying you're tired. Like, you're just repeating that thing. So I got an aura ring that can tell me actually I am tired <laughs> um, and I need to sleep. Love that. But, um, I have a very close friend who is a urologist and a surgeon. 
And so when I'm feeling like my energy is waning, I will call Courtney. And I'm like, now remind me, your longest surgery, oh, there's sometimes are 10 or 12 hours, you don't go to the bathroom, you're not eating, how are you focusing yeah. for that long? So I try to make sure I have people, I have a friend who's a federal judge, about listening, um, listening to what's not said. Um, so in addition to the people you work with or the people that you see every day, think about your friend network yeah. and what skills and capabilities they have that are very different than your own and how you can call on them to help build your own capabilities. Thank you. So people who talk to you and lift you up and people who talk about you and sponsor you in places and yes. in the right places. Yes. So thank you for mm -hmm. that. Um, it's said, it's often said that uh, behind every successful woman, there's another woman and a man, oh. right? And that's where allyship comes in. That's where Craig comes in for all of us. Thank you, Craig. And, and I see a whole bunch of other allies here too. Uh, so talk to us a little bit about allyship and how, what your thoughts are there and how we seek those. Yeah, and there's so many threads to this conversation that all connect. I think going, I'll start actually with building on what Sam said because there's allies and what's their responsibility and how they should show up. And then there's what, again, what you can control and how you can show up. One thing I will say before I get into what allies can and should be doing for us is, what do you need from them, to Sam's point, and what, and, um, what is your ask? So as an example, currently we're working on a brand strategy and looking at the brand and who we are and that identity, and I've had a number of, I have a number of peers and counterparts across the company, um, some of them men, some of them women, um, where I've said, I need you. I need you to be a partner with me on this. This will not succeed unless I have your time, unless I have your focus, unless I have your support. I think if you just say it, say what you mean, say what you need, they will, to Sam's point, they will show up 99% of the time. So I would say just be as clear and proactive as you can be and also create that type of communication. How can I help you? How can I show up for you? How can I make this easier on this journey as we go together? So I would say when you think about allies or your networks or your mentors, um, be the one who is also driving that forward. I think from you know talking about allies and what they can do, I think it's tied to actually the way you asked the question earlier of how you show up and then how you show up behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. Those are two different things and we need allies to be doing both. So first of all, I love that there are men in this room. Thank you, I love that there are men virtually. Thank you for showing up. Thank you for showing up in meetings and ensuring that women are heard, that you're passing the mic, that you are following up, that you're building bridges, that you're collaborating. And also, it's important behind the scenes the conversations that are happening, the meetings that are taking place, the experiences, the access, where you can actually, behind the scenes, be bringing things forward. It's interesting, what I, I was just telling you about this person who I had said this, I need you. I, I wonder if I should say, I, should, I won't say his name, maybe one day I will. He's, <laughs> he's been an incredible partner to me, but how I know he's an ally is his leader came to me and said, this person has just been so leaned in on what you are doing and so excited and rallying you know, the team oh. and talking it up and with so much energy and enthusiasm, which spoke to me as he's showing up as a partner and behind the scenes he's a partner. So that is our ask and that is also our expectation um, from, from our allies. So all of you allies are there. There's a call to action here. To action. Uh, so thank you for that. And then also for the women, seek it out and verbalize. Yes. Be very clear on what you're expecting. And you said 99% yes. of the times Absolutely. you will see them. And I have seen that too. So um, from this section, what we really understand in here is as you rise up, do send that elevator down for the others to move up. There's a special place in hell, as they say, for women who den don't help others. You don't want to be there. <laughs> help each other, okay? So Madeline with that, <laughs> we are going to go to another one of the round the panel discussion. So you inspire all of us, right? We're all inspired just with this discussion here. Who inspires you? Uh, maybe we'll start with you. Yeah, um, I would say my mom. Oh. God bless her, she's still living. She lives a couple blocks away from me uh, in the city. Oh. I will tell you, she was, she was a psychologist. She'll say she still is a psychologist. <laughs> um, when I look back at growing up, and this is no exaggeration, even in hard times, I lost my dad uh, recently, a few years ago, she has always shown up positive. 
it is the, st I, ca I cannot think of one day where my mother showed up just cranky or in a bad mood. She showed up with positive intent, positive insight, a positive spin. It will be okay. We will get through this. It's another day. We're healthy. We're good. It's a blessing. And so times are tough right now. Everywhere. Our, our, our jobs are tough. Outside in the world is tough. Sometimes our families and our communities, there's a lot happening. So I, I am so inspired by her, both resilience, but that positivity. And I think it goes to some of the things in terms of what we're saying to ourselves in the narration is, I have my mom's voice and my, I literally have, she calls me five times a day. So <laughs> she is she is literally always in my head and she's just been an absolute inspiration. Yeah, and Leslie, aren't we lucky to have inspiration so close to us yes. Yes. in our Amen. everyday life? Amen. So yes. thank you for that. Mandana. I, I will, I'm just gonna follow on that theme a little bit. I, I, I would actually say it's my niece. She is um, 14 years old, mm -hmm. and uh, the thing I love about her is it's the age when math is starting to become not cool. <laughs> There's a, you know, a little bit of that going on. It's middle school, things are, things are a little dicey. Mm -hmm. She has, you know, gone to the other end of this. She owns it, she completely loves, uh, you know, computer science and math, and she's killing it and all of that. She loves play. She loves to sing as well. And I just see the hope of what I think is oh. possible for us. And that I love because she has none of the same preconceptions that some of us come to today. I am not able to, I am not good at. None of that is in her vocabulary. And I hope that stays. So there's hope there, there is positivity. But every time I interact with her, I see the promise of what the future can be for us. Mm -hmm. And I'm really overjoyed by it. It's, it's amazing how inspiration comes in all shapes and sizes, right? So thank you for that. Stacy. Um, I will follow Leslie. Um, a little bit of a, a different um, angle though. My mother passed in August, but has so always yeah. been my inspiration. Um, she was brilliant um, and was a trailblazer in technology for black and women um, when there were not many of us in that profession at all and really dedicated her career to the, the theme of what we're talking about, lifting other people up to the point that sometimes it hurt her ability to get roles because she was very direct with leaders about who they should be promoting and move the organization. And many of those women or people of color have come to me to say, I'm in this job or I have this career because of your mother. Um, she was a fighter, she marched in the civil rights movement. And then when she um, was diagnosed with Alzheimer's, her grace, I'm a little emotional, her grace through that of just when life happens, it happens. I'm not gonna fight this. This is what is in store for me. And that role modeling of just fighting for other people and having grace for yourself no matter what happens in your life is an inspiration to me every single day. I just need to hug you for that. <laughs> no, yeah. But I really will. I am. <laughs> for sharing that with us. She truly was an inspirational lady. Um, and sorry for the loss. Sam? I don't want to follow. <laughs> um. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> no, that was amazing. Um, I would be lying if I didn't say that I truly grab inspiration from everything around me. I find inspiration from someone every single day. It's a little bit of why the post of her positivity truly is authentic to me because we have so many amazing people to be inspired for in this room around us. So quotes do grab me and I actually find quite a bit of energy and motivation around them um, from people like you mentioned, Brene Brown, by the way, that is who I did steal the post thing from. Um, <laughs> I love Brene Brown. But also, uh, you know, Ruth Kidd Bader, <laughs> RBG, you know, people who have really truly blazed trails, but they truly Oopsie. have <laughs> blazed trails. Um, they, they clearly have. But uh, I would say, you know, one that's for me is sticking kind of with the route of family, my sister. And for being someone who is very much like me is completely different. She was a teenage mom. She never got the opportunity to get a higher education. Um, she works, has worked in a flower shop um, for, for decades. 
and the things that she sacrificed and the things that she has done, and she's now uh, enrolled in school. She oh. is trying to get her, her degree right now. It's, I mean, she inspires me every single day and didn't always have it life easy. Good and continues to break barriers. That's awesome. Thank That's you wonderful. so much for sharing Thank those nuggets. Yeah. Okay, we cannot have a women's panel without talking about work-life balance. Well, scratch that, <laughs> work-life choices, um, and just general well-being, right? There's a lot of discussions happening around that right now, and uh, I think it's an important topic to touch. And what I'm gonna do is, uh, maybe Leslie, start with you. Yep. Women are expected to kind of slice and dice their lives and do it all. Right. Do you do it all? Um, and if you don't, what are, how do you plan on what to do and what not to? It depends who you ask. Um, <laughs> it depends who you ask. I, listen, it is, it is exactly as you're describing. It is a journey. And, you know, I, I, you know, throughout my career, I've been in sort of different stages and phases. Obviously, my kids are the most important things in my life. Some of us are moms. Some of us are not moms. But we all have lives mm. and people in our lives and things in our lives that we care about. Um, but I was a different person when I was pregnant at a company, when I was having kids, young kids, when they're teenagers, when they're getting older. Different sort of needs, different priorities, and different ways to balance and rebalance as we go. Choices is the key word. I think choices and boundaries. And I found it really hard when I was coming up in my career to set boundaries. It was literally, I will do everything. I am pregnant, but you won't even know it, even though I was, <laughs> I'm like, you won't. See, I'll be on mat leave, but you won't even feel it. Um, I think that as I've grown and evolved, and I think the world has evolved in this, and the expectations and just the allowance to be able to have these things in our lives that also matter has really sort of shifted the dialogue. And I, every time a woman or a man comes to me and says, I'm pregnant, and mom, I'm like, ah, oh, and I'm taking my, my leave and I am doing these things, and it's with confidence and ownership, and it's, you will not be hearing from me, and I'm like, goodbye, <laughs> and I will see you when you get back. I think there's an ownership and a boundary, and if True. you can learn that early and sort of embrace that early, people will respect respect that from you. I think the, the other just part to mention, and this is a privilege, right? The people that you surround yourself in your personal life it can be a partner, doesn't have to be a partner. It can be a sibling, it can be your community, it can be your friends. So it takes a village. When we're trying to go on a path of a career, it really does take a village of people who are there to raise their hand, there to get behind you, there to, you know, to pick up a kid when you're not there, show up when you're not always able to do so. And so, again, that intentionality around your support system is more important personally than anything you'll do in the workplace because they will guide you as you go. True, so create your boundaries and don't give anybody, I repeat, anybody the permission to make those boundaries for you. You do them for yourself uh, and it takes a village. So seek those that help out uh, and make sure that you are in there with them making those decisions. So thank you so much for that. And that does mean that uh, Stacy. It comes down to you as an individual, but also people around you, and how it is at work. We can be a lot more accepting, inclusive. So any t uh, tips that you've got uh, from your previous jobs that you're gonna plan to bring here to Verizon? Yeah, one mantra um, that I had at a previous leadership team was leave loudly, so that you could be an example of, you know, not just kind of like, especially when you're working from home, you know, people would know perhaps that you went to go pick up the kids or that you went to the doctor's appointment. Um, let people know what's going on in your life to make that the norm. As leaders, yeah. we create norms whether we know it or not. And so if you leave loudly, then other people know, okay, well, I can do that too. Love that. Mm -hmm. I also, we've mentioned Brene Brown maybe like three times. We need to like bring her here or something. <laughs> but. Um, Vulnerability, her book Dare to Lead was a life changer for me. Mm -hmm. um, just the idea of being open, and, and the point is even if you're not talking about it, it is affecting your relationships and your meetings and your conversations. You might as well put it out on the table. And when my mother was first diagnosed, I couldn't keep it in, inside. I needed to let people know that my life was going to change. It was the best decision I ever made because the resources 
that came my way that I had no idea that I needed yeah. were so helpful. So I think setting that environment where we're leaving loudly, we're letting people know what's going on in our lives, not only helps with the environment, but also it helps you with what you need to do in your life. And so well said, in all my travels within Verizon, I hear so much about the benefits Verizon provides for that too. And so we are lucky indeed to be having that, but leaving loudly and making it known is uh, excellent. I'd never heard that, but I'm gonna make sure I'm embracing that. To the next thing, uh, Wandana. So I've all often been told, put yourself high up on that to-do list, take care of yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, I won't tell you what grade I will give you, uh, give mm -hmm. myself, or, um, uh, or else you, you wouldn't um, really think that that advice has been embraced. Mm -hmm. But Wandana, can you and do you embrace that advice? And uh, what is the trick to yeah. doing that. Yeah, so, so I just want two points that I think are important. Um, Self-care, uh, you know, and well-being, that, that's not selfish. Self-care is not selfish. It is about uh, really being aware of yourself and your needs, and that's, that, that's the first thing. I think we often guilt ourselves into thinking, oh my God, if I spend time on this, it's somehow uh, not the right thing, or I'm taking away from something else. Um, the second is it will be different for each person. And it can't, what's great for me is probably not gonna be great for, uh, yeah. for others. So for me, I mean, uh, a great thing is I come home, I have a dog. Nina it does not care what kind of day I've had. <laughs> she really just cares that I throw the ball, that I pay attention to her single-mindedly sometimes, and I, you know, I am, I am her, at, you know, at her beck and call. It's a great way to just remove your, 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 get out of your headspace, remove yourself from kind of what's happened. But I'll tell you something what doesn't work for me, and I, and with all apologies to the meditation piece, <laughs> I, I have tried, I come from a culture I, of I meditation, <laughs> yoga, all that, but I have tried sitting cross-legged and focusing on my breathing. I'm gonna get you. Uh, it does not work for me. Uh, my to-do list keeps going and going, and then I, I end up feeling like, oh my God, like this is just, I'm trying to meet this idea of self-care. I should be more self-caring, and it doesn't work. So what I find is find something where it allows you to be out of your body, out of your mind, to really feel that oneness. For me, that might be time in the garden time playing a really badass video game <laughs> where I'm you know doing something that that really requires me to be immersed in something in a different world in a different place than where I am what it, whatever it is it has to be something that t transports Works you me. gives you joy find where you find that sort of sense of uh, you know limitlessness in yourself so it shouldn't be a chore it shouldn't be a list it shouldn't be any of that it should be how you care for yourself so. thank you Note Sorry, yourself, to... get a dog. <laughs> Thank We're you. We're going to do some guidance. Thanks, Thanks for uh, we, we will. Yeah, I can and, see that um, coming. On to a little more of a serious topic around uh, mental health. So I was actually surprised, Sam, in uh, reading that mental health affects women three times more than men. Yet there is a little bit of a taboo, a stigma around this, uh, this entire topic. People, women need to seek help. So anything that Verizon does there, what is it that you've seen and how is it that we can be taking better self-care of ourselves, including anything we may need for our own mental health? Yeah, yeah it's so true. And what we see in the data, and I'll actually give a couple of, of things. We do, women tend to put their oxygen masks on last. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, we see this in the data, for example, working women who are mothers take care of themselves last. They actually have the lowest rate of just getting an annual physical. They will make sure everyone in their family has one. We actually see this from our own data. Uh, they will make sure everyone else in their family has one all the time, but we, won't, we don't take the time to do it for ourselves. Little things like that. And then certainly mental health, I, we, we continue to see the pandemic continue from a mental health uh, crisis, uh, specifically in, in the United States, and uh, it's not going away. It absolutely yeah. rose during the pandemic. We saw impact, um, you know, generations, uh, young generations at a far greater rate than we ever saw for any of you uh, like myself who were working to help your children find a mental health support and therapist and during the pandemic. It was mm -hmm. so difficult. So difficult. Um, we believe in HR and it really means something to me that I don't think you can work well unless we help you live well. Mm -hmm. 
So if you live well, you will work well. But it's hard, it's Stacey, like you said, it's some of the hardest things you can do is have the courage to tell those that you work with something that's going on outside of work. Um, it takes a different level of bravery yeah. to do that. But almost always you are surrounded with support and compassion and empathy and an understanding for what you're going through. Um, and it will help you work well. So we have some, some really, I mean, I'll, I'll highlight one, but I'm really proud of the way that we come together from, from Bennett's perspective, but to really support that all the way down to leader training. How do we show up with empathy? How do we you know, have that compassion in everyday conversations? How do we make you feel seen? Yeah. And I think that's what we all want uh, as humans. But one, we just announced Spring Health uh, as a new provider. I called this one out because I actually went and used it. Mm -hmm. um, but I talked about the, the struggle in getting mental health support. Right now, Spring Health is a provider that we just announced for, for the US where you can go in online. If you have not done this, please, it's amazing. You go in intuitively, fill out a profile, say what you're looking for, and there's two different levels of support. One is therapist, but the other one is like, executive career coaches. Oh, wow. The number one request I get is, how do I get coaches around here, right? And you need that outside yeah. bias. So you can get two different angles. Um, I actually tried out both. Mm -hmm. So last week I had a therapy appointment. <laughs> um, and it was amazing. I got an appointment literally the next day. Wow. Which if you have tried to find help, it is really hard. We don't do that enough for ourselves. We don't do that enough for ourselves. So the first three sessions are free the, of mm -hmm. both, of each one. And you know, those are the types of things I think that, especially in a, when we are working so differently, it's not like you know, for people who were using the gym and movement, you need movement to do your self care. You're not in the office five days a week where you're using the gym. So we needed a thing like gym pass where it can meet you where you are. But spring health is another one. So, so thinking about Thank benefits you. to meet people where they are. Thanks so much. So put yourself higher on that to-do list. And Sam, you said it, if you live well, you work well. So it's highly important that that well-being is completely all-encompassing. So thank you for that. Uh, I'm going to switch again to another one of the, the round the panel. And this time, we talked a lot about growing in your jobs and constantly pushing, pushing the envelope. Um, how do you stay abreast and how do you constantly learn? Any t tips that you all have across this panel? Yeah, I, I, th I think it, the first and foremost is really just remaining curious about whatever it is that, that's out there. Um, and, and the great thing about a company like ours is we have an expert on almost everything that we might want to learn about. Uh, and I, and I, I just, I, you know, sometimes it's just asking the, the question and to be able to say, huh, I wonder how, I wonder why. If we begin with that, I think uh, it helps us just kind of get that, that ball rolling and at least you know, get, gets us going in terms of trying to that educational journey. Any publications? Don't tell us about all the legal ones, but any, <laughs> any, any, any podcasts, anything you would recommend? Um, uh, you know, for me, I, I, strangely enough, Wikipedia is actually a Wikipedia. great source. <laughs> it feels very <laughs> old school. I feel a little uh, sad, you know, not, non savvy saying that, but I, I think it's great for a lot of stuff. I would definitely Thanks. echo, and I would have said um, curiosity and being curiosity. curious. But, um, I, I'm a big believer that ideas and growth and learning comes from like the strangest places. Mm -hmm. um, my husband will be very embarrassed at admit, admitting this, but um, our nightly ritual when we were in Chicago, he would record Jeopardy, and that, during dinner we'd watch Jeopardy. And you realize how well I realize how much I don't know. <laughs> um, he's like, he knows like every, he should be on Jeopardy. Mm. Um, but it's a way to like broaden your curiosity yeah. outside of the realm True. of the things that you're thinking about every single day, um, helps to expand your mental capacity and have a little fun. Mm -hmm. So invite me to trivia. <laughs> I love that. Thank you. Yeah. I do love podcasts. So I do podcasts while I'm getting my movement, whether it's exercising, walking on the weekends, on the treadmill, driving to and from the office. Um, one of my favorites, I, I should honestly, we need Brene, but if you have not tuned into the Dare to Lead podcast, mm -hmm. I tend to like those organizational psychologists and I don't think it's just because I'm in HR, but it could, there could be a little bias there. But they're, they're really quite amazing and they have such a broad uh, depth. It, yeah, Dare to Lead's a great one, absolutely. I'm about to derail this answer, I'll tell you right now. <laughs> well, we love that, we love that, we're waiting. I spend a ton of time on social media. 
a ton of no. time. No. When you <laughs> shocking. When that, that's you, all of our guilty pleasures. Yeah, yeah. Listen, we're not listen. About. When you are in a role like mine and doing this type of work, it is critical that you are on the outside looking in. Always. Mm. It's a balance, right? You don't. You want to make sure you're not drunk on your own Kool Aid. You want to make sure that so you true. are both seeing what other brands are doing, but more importantly, click into the comments. Yeah. See what real people are saying about our competitors and about us. Yes. Sometimes it's great and sometimes it's not so great. Um, but I think what happens is you get really close to the customer in a very authentic way. Those conversations are our brand. Those conversations yes. are doing our marketing, good, bad, and ugly. So TikTok is my friend, <laughs> might be my best friend. Um, <laughs> I highly do not recommend and recommend. So do, do, with, that, do with that what you will, it's, it's quite addictive. But, so like limit your time. But I think just seeking out the truth and finding and connecting with actually real humans on the internet um, is for me the best way to learn about what we need to do more of, stop doing, start rethinking as we go. We love do you it. You need to work, bestie. I do. <laughs> <laughs> she hasn't taken pulse yet, so she'll get it. She'll get yeah. Yeah. Lunch, she'll get a best it. friend at work. Uh, you'll have many, oh, many. Is that a question? Yes, oh. that's right. Aww. Okay. Uh, yeah, and you can have multiple answers too. Oh, I love so. that question. Okay. Very good. Uh, so we are almost at the end of our conversation. This has been amazing, won't you say? Yeah. It has just been absolutely. Yeah. But Amazing. seriously, the, the amount I have learned here, making mental notes so I can go down and write those mm -hmm. down, but just some impressive amount of candor here, impressive amount of courage. Courage to get started, courage to learn, courage to fall, and courage to pick yourself up and then rinse and repeat and do it again. Mm -hmm. And they do it, they do it every day and inspire us, ignite us, and I feel very included in this journey as you all shared uh, your stories with us. So thank you. Thank you very, very much. I also want to make sure today is kind of a precursor to International Women's Day. That is tomorrow. Mm -hmm. But I want to thank each one of you for what you do. You know who you all are. Mm -hmm. Everything you do is an inspiration for someone else. Mm -hmm. Make sure you're cheering for each other. Remember that, the special place in hell, you don't <laughs> want to be there. You don't want to be there. You want to help each other and make sure you lift as you rise. And in order to do that, you start tomorrow with a call to action. I'm asking each one of you all, as well as all of you here, and the allies can do it too, one inspiration that you have as a leader. Uh, write about them code them, put them in social media. Leslie will be the I'll first be one to I'll watch. And you have to put a hashtag of Women Month. It's in the CTA that came in via email. So please do that. We will compile all of it and put it together. And it's going to be a great source of inspiration for me and all of you. I want to end this with something pretty poignant. I want to make sure, uh, along with the thank you, I. I aspire for all of you to really go support strong women. So here's to all the strong women here in this room, in all those watch parties, in all those parties that are gonna happen afterwards. Let's make sure we see them, let's make sure we raise them, and let's make sure we be them. Oh. So with that, thank you everybody for your time. <laughs> We're lucky to work for a company where we can just show up as our authentic selves. One of the biggest things that helped me was having people that I could reach out to. Everybody is family. Everybody's willing to always help each other out, regardless of where you're from, regardless of what you do.
to me, it is a fundamental part of an inclusive environment to have a place where I can find people who have something in common with me, and this is a place where I belong. It's all about bridging gaps, learning from one another. As a world, we, we get better when everybody has a voice in the game. This is a place where you can be yourself. I love knowing that I'm not alone. There are people like me that I can reach out to and people that will help each other out. Some of the best people in Verizon are right here. All of our ERGs are all about creating community and broadening our horizons. We know that we need diversity of thought, experiences, people, different backgrounds. Right from the get-go, I felt really seen and represented. It allowed me to elevate my voice. We are part of a beautiful, diverse community who lift each other up and celebrate each other's successes. We engage. We deliver. We advocate. We include one another. And we welcome you with open arms. Stop thinking, just join. You will learn a lot. You will be invested with a lot of different people. You'll be able to network. I love it for the networking. And that network within a network has allowed me to do so many things within Verizon. I love being able to build long lasting relationships to inspire, to motivate. New volunteer opportunities, new events. It's given me an opportunity to grow within my career, learn more about myself. It reminds us that we are stronger together.